Hello and welcome. This is what you will have by finishing this tutorial. It's an endless loop of a barbershop pole, and I've made this really beginner friendly. Um, even if you've hardly ever used Blender, you will be able to follow along with this tutorial and make this scene. Um, I've got all the project files you need completely for free on my website, so I'd love if you'd go over there and get them. And if you watch this tutorial and you find it useful and helpful, please like and subscribe as it is the number one thing that motivates me to keep making videos. All right, let's get started. Okay, I have Blender 2.9 open. I'm just gonna left click away from the splash screen and hit A, which will select everything. I'm hit X for delete and hit enter to actually do the delete. I'm going to be using a lot of short keys, um, but it really is just going to be beneficial for you to just start learning them as you know, almost every tutorial line, it'll, you'll need to know the short keys to follow along. So I'll take them slow and you'll always see what I'm pushing in the bottom right of the screen. And so one of the big ones, if you hold shift hit A, that lets you add. And if you hover over mesh and select cylinder, um, our basic pole shape is basically a cylinder. So this is a good start for us. Okay, and whenever you add a new object to your scene, there's this little box in the bottom left. So if you click, you can expand that open. And the thing I really wanna change here is I don't want to have a cap. So I'm gonna click on the end gone and click nothing because I don't really need the top and bottom to our cylinder. And I'm just gonna go ahead and close that box. Okay, and then um, I wanna see this straight on. So I'm gonna hit numpad one and this will take me into my front view. If you don't have a number pad, um, let me hit this button again, go into your preferences like shown here and click on emulate numpad and then you can just use your one key to jump into your front view. Okay, so the uh, barbershop pole is much taller. So I'm gonna wanna scale it, but I only wanna scale it vertically. So I'm gonna hit S for scale and if you see if I move my mouse, it's scaling the whole thing. But I hit, if I hit Z or Z and pull out, you can see that it's only doing, uh, it's only scaling this out vertically. So I'm just gonna drag this out until it's about the size I'm looking for. I think something like maybe this is good. So I'm just gonna left click to lock that in. And I don't want our scene to be really boring looking. So I just wanna start um, make it look more fun while we're working. So let's go ahead and add this material. So in this right panel over here, you see this little circle and it's material properties. If I click new, I'll get a new one. And what I wanna do here is I wanna change the base color. So in older versions of Blender, this button was on the right side, but starting at 2.9, it's here. So I'm gonna left click on that and click on image texture. And then we're gonna hit open so I can navigate to Wherever you've got these project files, go into the assets folder, and actually it's not there. So let me hit back. Okay, and I don't want the scene to be all boring and gray while we're working on it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding the materials now. So this cylinder is still selected. In this far right panel, this little circle for material properties, I'm gonna click on that. Then I'm gonna click on new, that will add one in here. And then what we wanna do is, uh, in previous versions of Blender, this button was actually on the right side, but starting at 2.9, it's on the left side. So I'm gonna left click on that little button and go to image texture. And I'm gonna click on open, navigate to wherever you've downloaded my project files, go into assets and double click on this barbershop pole. And now if I have my mouse over here and I hit Z and material preview, you will see we've got um, our pole going. So one thing I'm gonna do is if I zoom in here, so I'm just using my middle mouse wheel to scroll in, you can see there's a bunch of lines here and that's because this is pretty low poly, um, but that's gonna work for this scene. We just need to right click and click on shade smooth and you will no longer see that. And then just to see if this has no seams, I'm just gonna click in with my mouse wheel and spin around and it doesn't match up perfectly right there, so I might have to uh, play with my file a little bit. Um, but let's keep going around. So other than that little spot, which it is not that noticeable, so I may end up just leaving it. Um, 
It is looking pretty seamless though. So I'm gonna hit uh, numpad one. You hit, can hit one to go back into your front view. And I'm gonna go ahead and save. And just so you can see um, what we what I did. So um, this is the image that's being applied onto the cylinder. And kind of the way it works is I had a bunch of straight lines and I just distorted them all to them being a slant. And so the, to make the illusion work where you know, the barbershop pole looks like the lines just keep going down. You need uh, the beginning of this to be the end of the next one. And they have to line up. So I had all my guidelines just to make sure um, that, you know, they lined up properly. So if I go back to Blender and if I uh, middle mouse click into orbit around, you can see um, I had some that were a little bit off. So I went and updated it. So the file you'll have, um, will be much more seamless. There is still like a teeny little notch you can see, um, but it's um, better than the first version I had. So just to give you a note about uh, this image texture we added and how it's working. And while we're still trying to just make the scene look prettier, I'm also going to add in an HDRI. So if you click on this World Properties tab and look for this color, and again this button used to be over here, um, but starting at 2.9, you'll find it here. If you left click on that, click on Environment Texture, click Open, go to wherever you have the Assets folder, and double click on this Colorful Studio. Now we're not seeing anything. If I hit Z, we're in Material Preview. If you go to Rendered, we're actually seeing um, what we're going to be seeing in the scene. And so an HDRI is a common way to add interesting lighting to your scenes. If I middle mouse around, you can see we're just getting a, a lot of interesting light put into our scene um, without any additional work. Oh, let me turn my screencast keys back on. Um, I'm just middle mousing around. And yeah, so it's just nice to have this easy lighting. But you don't always want visible in the background. So one thing you can do is you can click on the little camera icon and under, let's see, where is it, film, under film, click on transparent, and now we're getting the lighting from that HDRI, but we're not actually seeing it in the viewport or the camera. So that's what I want for this scene, and I'm just gonna hit numpad one to go back into my front view. So our still in the cylinder still looks a little boring, so if I have it selected still, in the right panel, I'm gonna click on the material properties, and we'll scroll down until I see roughness. So this will control how reflective it is. If it's all the way up, it won't reflect anything. If it's all the way down, it'll be like a mirror. So I don't want it to be perfectly reflective, but maybe something like a 0.15 around that value. Um, you know, something like that will be pretty good. I want to have some nice little highlights on it, and I think that will be good. All right, so now we need to work on the kind of little cap thing. So I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, and this time I'm gonna hover over mesh and do a circle. <clears throat> it's kind of lost inside of here right now, so I'm gonna hit G and Z. So G for move, Z to just do it straight up. I'm gonna bring it up here and then left click. And let me just zoom in with my middle mouse a little bit. And if I hold shift and push in my middle mouse, I can pan. And so now I can get this more centered. I'm gonna hit S for scale because it needs this cap to be a little bit bigger than the pole itself. So something like that will be good. Left click. And then I'm gonna make it so it overlaps a little bit. So I'm gonna hit G and Z, bring it down until it overlaps a little bit. So if I tab into edit mode, you can see we actually see the vertices. So I'm gonna uh, push in my middle mouse so you can see this a little bit better. So the circle has all of these vertices, but they actually aren't connected in the center for a face yet. So with all of them selected, which they should be by default, if not, you can just hit A, which would select all of them. Just hit F, and that's gonna fill that in. So now we actually have a filled in circle here. So I'm gonna hit numpad one to go back to my front view. So they're still all selected. If I hit E, that's for extrude. So that's just gonna uh, extend all of these vertices up. So now I just kind of need to figure out how big I want this lip to be. And I think something like this will be pretty good. And I'm gonna middle mouse around so we can see the top a little bit better. And so we've got our lip. Now I'm gonna hit I for inset. You can see that just brings all of these uh, vertices in. 
and I'm gonna go to something about here and then left click and now I'm gonna hit E for extrude I'm just gonna extrude straight up from there and then left click about at this height I'm hit numpad one to go back to my front view so we have the basic shape of our cap we just need to keep extruding it and scaling it in until we get a smooth uh, curved uh, top to it so I'm just gonna hit E for extrude bring this up left click and hit S for scale and bring it in and you kind of want to do this gradually so I'm gonna hit left click and I may have even gone too high so I'm gonna hit G Z so it's moved just in the Z and bring it down a little bit hit E for extrude bring it up left click S for scale and like I said you, you want this to be gradual you don't want to go too far or too little you're just trying to make this a smooth curve in E for extrude left click S for scale and let's see maybe maybe one more extrude up left click S for scale bring it in maybe even I'm gonna try G and Z bring it down a little bit maybe something like that I don't know maybe one more E bring it up I'm gonna go just a little bit up S for scale actually I don't know I'm gonna hit escape on that control Z I think I'm happy with this I'm gonna tap out of edit mode and it's looking pretty good so we've got this it's still pretty crude but um, we're gonna add a subdivision surface so this is still selected under the wrench icon I'm gonna click add modifier and I'm gonna click on subdivision surface what this does if I tap into edit mode and I can use this little icon here to turn it off and on what it does is it tries to smooth anywhere in between um, vertices so it's smoothing this section here into kind of a curve rather than being straight lines and uh, I'm actually going to turn this up to two and now we can go and keep tweaking this so if I middle mouse in I'm gonna hold alt hit a to deselect everything I had those selected at the top and if you hold alt and left click in between these vertices here you're gonna get this whole circle and if I hit end to bring up my right panel and if you're under item you can take this mean crease and take it all the way up to one and that would make it completely sharp there and I can hold alt left click here and get this next ring and bring this mean crease all the way up to one and if I tab out of edit mode middle mouse around you can see it's straighten those back out I'm hit numpad one to go back into my front view tab out of edit mode and I actually don't want to be it perfectly at one I'm just gonna bring it down maybe let's see let's actually just click this little button to move up that's too slow let's see let's maybe just click in here and do a point two and then I'm gonna hold alt a to deselect hold alt left click get these let's go to a point two on this one and actually that's way too small for this bottom one so I'm gonna bring this up maybe maybe to a point four hit enter and then I want to get this one that we can't see so I'm gonna middle mouse around I clicked in with my middle mouse I'm gonna hit Z and click on wireframe I'm gonna hold alt hit a to deselect I'm gonna hold alt left click to get this inner ring I couldn't really see before and I'm gonna hit Z go back to rendered view and I'm gonna take this mean crease all the way up to one in this case and let's hit numpad one I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit let's tab out of object mode and or edit mode sorry into object mode and you can see there's a little bit going on here but let's make this smooth shading and see how this looks so if I right click on this and click on shade smooth you can see a little bit better how it's looking so the bottom looks really strange so let's tab into edit mode um, I think to fix this let's hold alt and left click and get this bottom ring I'm gonna hit I to inset this and bring this in a little bit and left click let me tab out of edit mode and yeah that fixed the issue that we had so this is looking pretty good let's add the material so we know if we need to make any additional changes so I'm just gonna hit my numpad one to be back into my front view and it's still selected let's go over to the materials click new and this one I want to be really metallic or you know metal so take the metal all the way to one and then again the roughness 
shows how reflective it is or is not. So we want it pretty reflective. I don't want to be able to see, see exactly what's going on. So maybe something like here is pretty good, like a 0.3. Um, you can feel free to change this as you wish. And then I'm going to click on the white. I don't want it to be that bright. I want it to be a little darker. So I might take it down to about here. Something like that looks good. And I'm, I am noticing if I zoom in with my middle mouse and then shift middle mouse, uh, the top's got something weird happening too. So I'm going to uh, click in with just with minimal mouse to rotate around, tab into edit mode. And I think it's the same issue as before. I'm going to uh, hold alt and left click and just get this ring selected. And I'm going to hit I to inset this and bring it in maybe to about so. And let's hit numpad one. I might even move this up a little bit. Let's hit G and Z, bring this up, left click, tab out of edit mode, some middle mouse around. There's still a little bit of that kind of like banding going on. Maybe if I tab back in edit mode, hit I one more time, bring it in a little bit, tab back out. It's still there, but it's at the very top and that's really teeny and you're not gonna see that at all. So I'm gonna hit uh, numpad one to go to my front view. And yeah, I think this is a good overall shape. Um, you could tweak it a little bit more, but I think this is looking good. Let me just, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, hold alt A to deselect, shift middle mouse click to pan over. And yeah, I, I am happy with the shape of this. Okay. And so we've got on the top. Now we want it on the bottom also. So if I left click on the cap there and go back to the wrench, if I click on add modifier, I want a mirror modifier and we can mirror by an object. So um, we know we want it to be exactly mirrored compared to this cylinder. So I'm just gonna click on the little eyedropper here and click on that cylinder. And then for the axes, we don't need it on the X, we need it on the Z. So if I click on Z, you can see this is perfectly mirrored onto the bottom and we didn't have to duplicate it or anything. Um, I am thinking maybe it could be a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna try out for a second. I'm gonna hit S, Z and just make it a little bigger. Eh, no, I don't think I like it. I'm gonna hit escape. It actually is pretty good. Maybe I want to overlap a little more though. Let me hit G and Z. And yeah, I think maybe it should just overlap a little bit more. Maybe, let me hit escape, just see where I was. Just a little teeny, I'm hit G, Z. I'm just gonna bring it down a teeny bit. I just think the overall shape looks a little bit better this way. I'm hold Alt A to deselect everything. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. So now we need a little part where the cap kind of connects to the part that will be touching the wall. And to do this, um, I want to go to my side view, but I want to go to the side that's to the left of our object. If I, if I just hit numpad three, I'd be seeing this side. If you hold control and hit numpad three, that will take you to the side view, but the opposite side that you would get from um, normally just hitting numpad three. So hold control with your numpad three. And so now I'm on the kind of left side of the object. If I left click on our cap, tap into edit mode, I'm just gonna scroll my mouse in and then shift middle mouse to bring myself up. Okay, and then at the top left here, you can see these are your selection modes. So it's vertex, line, and face. I'm gonna click on face. I'm gonna left click on this one shift left click on this other face and now i'm going to hit i for inset and i'm just going to bring this in a little bit left click and let's zoom in a little bit more so now i have some more vertices here i'm going to hit uh, numpad one to go to my front view and now i'm just going to hit e to extrude this out i'm just going to bring it out a teeny bit if we start um we need extra geometry here because this subdivision surface will start trying to smooth everything and if we do too much too soon, it just kind of won't know what to do and it won't look good. So I'm gonna extrude again, bring it out a little bit more. And I'm gonna hit S for scale and just make this a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna hit E for extrude, bring it out maybe to about here. And then let's see. And then we don't want it to be all curved out here. So I'm gonna take this mean crease all the way up to one and I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. I'm gonna hold alt, hit A to deselect. I'm just gonna middle mouse around to see how this looks. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. So it extends out and is reaching towards the wall 
and it flattens out to where it touches the wall. So yeah, I think that's looking good. I'm hitting numpad one, zoom out, shift, middle mouse click, and you can also see since we've mirrored it, it's also done that on the bottom. So I am thinking maybe you should extend out a little bit further. So I'm gonna tab back into um, edit mode. That face should still be selected. So I'm just gonna hit G and X, and that's gonna allow me to move it this way. And it honestly can be f go through the object we're about to create. So it, we can even make it bigger than it needs to be and then kind of hide it if we need to. Um, but I think something like that's gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna left click and then tab back out of Object mode, I'm gonna hit Alt A to deselect everything. And yeah, so now we just need to make this object over here. All right, and the part that connects to the wall is just gonna be a really simple cube. So I'm gonna hold Shift, hit A, hover over mesh and click on cube. Now we just need it to be the right size. So we need to extend a little higher up than where it connects. So I'm gonna hit S and Z. So it's gonna scale it up vertically like I said, it needs to extend a bit further, so maybe about so. And then I'm gonna hit G and X to move it over. Now it needs to be smaller on the X, so I'm gonna hit S for scale, and then X to do it on the X. And let's maybe get to something like this. Now I just wanna move it into position, so I'm gonna hit G and X and bring it over until I'm happy with where it is. Maybe something like that, and then left click. And then let's middle mouse around. You can see it's way too big on this other axis. So I'm gonna hit S for scale and then Y and just bring it down to something that would make more sense. Maybe something like that. And I'm just gonna orbit around and see if I'm happy with this. Maybe it's a little bit too thick. I'm gonna hit S for scale, X, bring it down a bit. Again, orbit around. Could be a little smaller on the Y too, S, Y. This is a little bit preference and you, know, you can look up reference images to see how others look, but you know, just play with it a little bit. And I think that's good. I'm gonna hit numpad one to go into my front view. Okay, and you usually don't want something that has perfectly sharp 90 degree angles on it. So we're gonna use a bevel modifier to make this look a little bit better. Um, but sometimes after you scale things, Modifiers don't work exactly as planned. So I have this selected. I'm gonna hold control, hit A, and I'm just gonna click on apply all transforms. And let me just middle mouse around and then zoom in. I'm gonna shift middle mouse just so I can see these edges. I did that so now when I go to the wrench tab for modifiers, add modifier and add in a bevel. If I hadn't applied the transforms that applied the scale, this would not really be behaving properly. So um, that's why we did that. So how this works is it just takes all those corners and just starts to bevel them. And you don't really need too much in this case. Um, maybe just go down a few. I may take the segments up to three. Um, something like, so like 0 0.03 and three is looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now. And then let's go to the material properties. We already have, we want it to be the same as the cap. So if you click on this little circle here and click on this second material, you can see we have the correct one. And then in this case, I could, the shading could go either way. I'm gonna right click and do shade smooth and see how I feel about that. I'm also thinking this all could be more reflective, but you know what, um, this is a good time to, so e, we're using Eevee right now and Eevee does not um, by default have all the reflections in the scene. So if I click on this camera icon, let's just enable some settings to help our scene. So I'm gonna click on ambient occlusion and that just adds shadows where things kind of meet up. And then under sc for screen space reflection, I'm gonna click on that. And you can see we now have reflections. Um, let me turn it off and on so you can see it's adding some reflections in um, that weren't there before. And we're getting some here too. Um, you can kind of see a little bit on this, um, the blue. I'm actually gonna, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the wrench and maybe let's make the amount a little bit bigger. Just kind of exaggerate the effect a little bit. Just middle mousing around. Maybe something like that's better. And let me just go between, right click, shade flat. Oh, I mean, yeah, definitely right click, shade smooth. Yeah, so the smooth is um, what we want for sure. And that's looking pretty good. So 
Again, I'm going to go to numpad 1, zoom out, shift middle mouse click, alt A. I just want to take a moment to look at this. And before I go, let's go back to these EV settings. Let me just make sure I have everything I want. So Bloom will add in some cool reflections. I'm actually not going to use, or not reflections, but um, glow wherever there's bright objects. And you could go in and tweak these settings to have it be not too much. But in this case, I'm actually going to leave the glow out. The scene's already really bright and reflective, and I don't think we need it in this case. Um, under screen space reflections, I'm just going to turn on refraction. I don't think we have in our scene, but I'm going to have it. And then for the half res trace, I want the full res, so I'm going to turn that off. And then under shadows, I'm going to click on high bit depth just to make sure we're getting high quality shadows. And that should be it on our EV settings. Okay, let's add in our camera. So I'm going to hold shift hit A and go down the camera and just left click on it. Um, we're not seeing it. Let's see where it was put. I'm going to hit numpad 7 in my top view. So here it is. I'm going to hit G and Y to bring it over here. Left click. And I'm going to hit S for scale. So changing the scale of the camera doesn't actually change anything. It does just give you a better idea of your composition and your framing. So I'm kind of making it match uh, the size of this scene. I'm going to hit uh, numpad 0 will put you into your camera view. And as you can see, we are way too close. So the camera is still selected. So I'm going to hit G and Y and just move my mouse back and get it to about here and then left click. And I want this to be a vertical shot. So under the printer icon, I'm just going to flip these numbers for the resolution. So I'm going to make it 1080. I'm going to hit tab 1920 and hit enter. And so we're closer to fitting now. I still have the camera selected, so I'm going to hit G and Y, move my mouse until I'm framing it. I don't want it to be completely right up to the top and bottom. I want to leave a little bit of space for comfort. Maybe something about there will be good. So now we need our brick wall. I'm going to hold shift, hit A, uh, hover over mesh, kick on plane. And let's hit S for scale. You can't really see it, but oh, actually, I'm going to hit escape on that. Let's middle mouse around. And now I'm going to hit S for scale. Just bring this out, left click. And I'm going to do R for rotate, X to do it on the X axis. I'm going to type in negative 90, I think. Actually, let's hit escape on that. Um, let's R for rotate, Y, and type in 90. That's actually what I want. And then hit enter. I'm going to hit. Uh, numpad 1 to go to my front view, and I just want to position this so it matches uh, right up against uh, the connection piece here. So I'm going to hit G for, for move, and then X for the X axis, and just bring this over and left click. I'm just going to zoom in, and I'm going to hit G and X just to make sure I'm really getting it right up against it. Now I'm going to hit 0 to go to my camera view, and let's see, am I happy with the size? So if I hit S for scale, you can uh, play with how big this is. I may make it up to here and left click where um, the top of this corner is above the camera. And I also want to be conscious of how much uh, the wall goes past this piece here. I kind of want this to look like it's on like a corner of a building. So I'm going to hit G and Y and I'm going to move my mouse until there's about maybe this much space between the two. So you like we're kind of near the edge and corner of a building. So I think that will probably be good. You can play with that a little bit yourself. Okay, now we need to add in our brick texture. So at the top, you'll see shading. I'm gonna click on shading. And I've got the wall selected. And right here, I can just click new. That will actually add in a new material. And what we want to do is, so before we um, we didn't use the node editor, but if you hold shift hit A and click in the search, I'm going to type in image and get image texture. Just hit enter and move my mouse over and left click. Now I'm going to click open, navigate to assets, and I want this factory brick diff 2K. So I'm going to double click on that. And if I just left click and drag from the color to the base color, you will see that we have the, the brick wall is not in the correct orientation, but we do have the brick wall. Um, you could fix this a couple of different ways, but let's just keep going for a second. I'm gonna left click on this image texture, 
hold shift, hit D to duplicate, bring it down, and I'm gonna click on the folder icon, and this time I want this uh, factory brick NOR 2K, I'm gonna double click on that, and I can shift middle mouse pan around, I'm just gonna left click and drag this color into this normal, and I'm going to, let's see, hold shift hit A in the search, I'm gonna click on search, and then type in normal map and left click on that. And if you hover over this line that we already have connected and left click, you'll connect this normal map. So I'm just gonna scroll in with my mouse at the top so you can see what happens a little better. If I take this normal up to two, it kind of tries to add fake geometry where there's edges. So if I'm gonna take this up really high to like 10, um, you can kind of see, I'm just middle mousing around so you can see, it kind of adds a fake uh, dimensionality to it that we don't actually have. Um, you could make this look even better with displacement map, but I want to keep things really simple and it's not that big in our uh, final image. So we can really get away with just um, this. I'm going to take the strength maybe back down to two. Uh, I think that's going to work pretty good. So now we actually need this in the correct orientation. So um, go back to the top. This time I'm going to click on UV editing. And if I um, have my mouse on the left side, I'm just going to middle mouse out to zoom out. And then over here, I'm actually just going to hit zero to look through my camera and hit Z and click on rendered. And so our wall is selected here and we're in edit mode. Um, let me hit uh, A. Actually, I don't need to hit A to select everything. It's already selected. With my mouse on the left panel, I'm going to hit A to select um, all of these vertices. And I'm going to hit R to rotate and just hit 90 and hit enter. So now you can see we actually have the bricks in the correct spot. And I'm gonna uh, zoom in with my mouse over here and then bring my mouse back to the left side. If you hit S for scale, you can now change the size of the brick wall, uh, the bricks. And I'm gonna go for something maybe about here looks correct. Let me tab out of object mode to kind of see in the middle mouse around and just kind of see if I think that this makes sense for the scale of our object here. And yeah, I think it does, but if you don't think it does, you can tab back into edit mode, move your mouse back over here, and hit S for scale and adjust this a little bit. I'm gonna hit escape though, because I think I was happy with mine. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring it out, and maybe left click there, hit zero to go back to my camera view tab out of edit mode and yeah I think that's looking good so now we can just click this layout button and get back to our layout view okay and we've got one more thing we need to add to our scene and that's our background image so when you're making something you're just really comp you're bringing together different elements just to get your final you know what you're looking to accomplish in this case we don't need to model all these buildings we can just find a picture that makes sense and it's kind of shot in a similar way that it could fit and look believable in our scene. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, we do need to enable one add-on though. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, and then click on Add-ons, you have to search for, just type in Image, and you want to uh, check this Import Images as Planes. And once you have that, I'm gonna close this, you now can click File, Import, Images as Planes. Uh, double click into the assets folder. I'm just going to single left click on this image, which is going to be the background. And we need to change the setting here. So if you don't have your right panel up, hit N to bring it up. And under material settings, I'm going to change this to shadeless. And the reason I'm doing this is if you have it principled, this will respond to the lights in your scene. And I don't want it to respond to our lights in the scene. I'm happy with the colors that it is. So I'm going to click on shadeless and click on import images as planes. It's really small, I believe, so I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring it up to about here. I'm just gonna middle mouse around. I don't want it to be directly through our object, so I'm gonna hit G and Y, just move it back to maybe about here. Now I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view, and now it's just about positioning it um, where we want. So I'm gonna hit S for scale, bring it up maybe to Let's see, maybe about so, 
actually maybe smaller. I'm gonna hit S for scale, trying to make it pretty similar to what I had in my first round of doing this. Something about here looks pretty good. And I'm gonna hit G and Z to move it up a bit, maybe to about here. Let's see, it looks pretty good. I don't like how this yellow is right at the edge of here. I'm gonna hit G and X to move it over now. And maybe just so there's a slight little hint of it, I'll put it here. And yes, just play with that until you like the composition that you've got. And by default, the overall colors are kind of dull in Blender, so you can really kick up the contrast. And the easiest way to do that is if you click this little camera icon, and at the very bottom there's color management. If you click that open and scroll down, there's this look button. So in the, by default, it's at none. And so we want either high contrast or even very high contrast. And I think in this case, let's see, go to high contrast. And I may have even played with this exposure and gamma a bit to really make the scene brighter. I'm gonna take the exposure. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna, I want this to be a really bright and shiny scene. So I'm gonna take this even up a bit. Um, if you go too far, you really blow out your scene. But I do want the overall scene to be brighter. So I'm just gonna bring this up a bit, maybe to something like this. And let's even try out very high contrast as we're doing this. So maybe something, let's see, maybe something like that, even like a 0.115, something like that. Again, just play with it until you're happy, um, but you can adjust the contrast and like the overall brightness with those settings there. The last thing we need for our composition is the depth of field. So in the top right panel, I'm gonna click on the camera icon and then click on the camera icon here and just click this depth of field and click the little arrow to expand it out. So I wanna focus object. So I know I wanna focus on this cylinder. So I'm gonna click on the eyedropper and click on the cylinder. And now if I click in the f-stop and make it like 0.1, you can see it's a really dramatic effect. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Um, it's too, you know, it's probably too much and if you just uh, I guess the difference between 0.1 and 0.2 is very drastic in this case. Maybe a 0.15 hit enter. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And I can hold Alt, hit A to deselect at this point. And you really just want to uh, you know, get this um, to a level you're happy with. And maybe it is pretty dramatic, but maybe I am happy with the 0.1. You start to get um, some blur around the edge of this, which maybe is a little too much. Maybe it's, if I click in here, 0 0.13, hit enter. Um, I really do like to have the very blurry background. Um, and maybe that's pretty good. You, so yeah, you can play with this setting um, as much as you want, but I'm really liking to have a pretty drastic um, difference between the front and the back with the sharpness. If I just zoom in, and kind of see, and I can click this off and on and kind of see the before and after. And I like that we are getting some blur here and we're getting some blur there. So I'm just gonna zoom back out and save. Okay, now we're ready to actually animate this thing. So I'm gonna left click on the cylinder and I've got my right panel open. And if you don't, it's just N to open and close it. And if I hover over rotation, I can hit I and that's gonna add in a keyframe. And I kind of tested this out to know like how, the speed of this that will look good. So if I go to frame 60 and I click, so if I click and drag the Z, you can see this is the rotation we need. If I left click inside of there, I can click on or type in 360 and hit enter. So it's a full 360 degrees. And I can just hit I to lock in that keyframe. And in this timeline down here, these buttons will jump left and right between uh, keyframe. So if I click on this one, you can see the first frame and the last frame are the same. And that is how you make looping animations work. So since we know the first and last frame are the same, we actually want to end at frame 59, the one frame before, because when the video replays itself, frame 60 will actually just be the beginning of it starting over again. 
So um, if you see in the timeline here, this is actually the end of our animation. So I'm gonna click in there and change this to 59 and hit enter. And if I hit spacebar, um, we're just an issue where it's slowing down and stopping. And I'm gonna hit space. By default, um, keyframes kind of slowly go into one another. Um, but if I have my mouse at the bottom down here and they're both selected, if they're not, you can have your mouse down here and hit A to select them all. If you right click and go to interpolation mode, I'm gonna click on linear. And now if I hit spacebar, you can see it's gonna be perfectly smooth and you can't even tell that it's looping because it's just um, the start and end are exactly the same. So that's how you create that looping effect. I'm just gonna hit space bar to stop that and save. So we're now we're ready to render this thing out. So if I click on my little camera icon, actually no, it's the little printer icon. This is where your file is gonna be output. So I'm gonna click on the little folder and navigate to this project file, go into a renders folder. I'm just gonna name this animation two. This is my second time doing this. Hit enter, double click in there and just name this whatever you want. I'm gonna say barber animation, but really it can be whatever you want. I'm gonna hit enter twice to have that in. So now we have where it's going. And so I really recommend you render out a image sequence, which is what it currently is by default. So if you just went to render animation, it would render out a series of images. And from those images, you then would actually make your final animation. Um, the alternative is setting this to um, FFmpeg video, and then under that, there's encoding. Actually, I'll just show you real quick. So if I went to uh, FFmpeg video, under encoding, I would change this to MB4. This would render out a finished video. You may wanna do that, but if your computer crashes or anything happens during your rendering, you lose everything. So that's why people usually recommend to render out a PNG sequence or image sequence, just know that there's then one more step to actually make this loop or to actually have a video file. And I wanna make one more note is that if you just render out, you do wanna render this out, but whatever software, whether it's Blender or After Effects or whatever you use to take your image sequence and actually output a video, you usually, you should loop, you should um, loop it in the program multiple times because I've noticed that a lot of like Instagram and other platforms that even though this is looping perfectly, the moment the whole video starts over again, it has a little teeny glitch. So when I output the version that you saw at the start of this video, I outputted this and then stacked up about 20 seconds length and I rendered that out. So then only once every 20 seconds would there be a teeny little glitch at the loop. So I just wanna make that note so you know how to um, get the perfect loop. But so now that we have our folder set and we have what we want ready, I can just click render animation and we're rendering it out. It shouldn't take too long. So let me just zoom out a little bit with my mouse. Um, yeah, and there you go. So just let this render out and you're done. I decided before I had my final version. So and this is how you work too. Like you, you start doing something, you notice you don't like something and you adjust it. So I'm gonna make a couple adjustments. So I'm gonna left click on this. I had that little bit of yellow peeking out. I really actually ended up not liking it. So I'm gonna hit G and X. I'm just gonna move it over and then left click. So I'm just kind of hiding it. I didn't like how it was just a little teeny bit. And I'm gonna left click on the brick wall. I don't like how much it's showing here. So I'm gonna hit G and Y and I'm just gonna move it so that there's not as much, I'm gonna hit escape. Sometimes I do that just to know where I started from. So I just want it to be subtle, G, Y. I just wanna bring it a little bit back, maybe about there and left click. And the last thing I want, I'm gonna left click on the cap and go over to the materials. And I just think I wanna make this a little bit darker. The scene's so bright, I wouldn't mind this being a little bit darker. If you go too far, it's too much, but I might make it a little bit darker. And again, I might even, Let's see, maybe just something like that. I'm gonna hold Alt, hit A, deselect. And yeah, I think I'm just happier uh, with the overall look with those little adjustments. And so now I'm going back to render and animation and now I'm done. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something from it. Um, please like and subscribe if you did to support me making more content and have a great day.